I'm going to talk about classifying numbers, and they come in different categories, like whole numbers, integers, rationals, rational numbers, and irrational numbers. Make that an I. You probably remember some of this stuff. It wasn't that long ago that you were in math class. But we'll go over each of these and give you a bit more detail on what they, what they are. The meaning of whole numbers is kind of in the, de in the, in the term itself. They're the whole numbers. There's no, nothing in between them. So there's no fractions in, whole, in the set of whole numbers. But one of the things that's important to know is that you start with zero. So zero is the smallest whole number. And one way to define is just to give an example of a set. Zero is the smallest, then you go to one, then two, then three. And once you have that pattern, you can just put dot, 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 which means it goes on and on forever. Um, so there's a subset of whole numbers called the counting numbers. The counting numbers are one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. So sometimes whole numbers are defined as the counting numbers and then put zero in with them. So the counting numbers plus zero, of course, then you have to know what counting numbers are. But that makes sense, too, because that's what we do when we're uh, numbering things. We go one, two, three. So whole numbers are zero and all the counting numbers. Integers are often defined as whole numbers and their opposites. And opposites are two numbers that add up to zero. So one of the whole numbers, just take an example of five being a whole number. So five is a whole number, and what do you add to five to get zero? And from your previous experience, you probably know that's negative five. So negative five would be an example of an integer. Another way to define integers are to start with a set of whole numbers and go this direction like we did in the previous slide, but then also go in the opposite direction and just keep going. Sometimes the, um, they're referred to as, uh, well, they're the positive and negative. Some book, I think your textbook actually refers to them as the positive and negative whole numbers. Which I don't, I'm not real fond of that definition because we just defined whole numbers as 0, 1, 2, 3, so you can't really include negative numbers in that definition. Um, but sometimes people talk about negative whole numbers. I try to avoid that terminology, but you might hear it. You can say the whole numbers and their opposites is what works really well. Rational numbers, another term for rational numbers that would make sense to you are fractions. Rational numbers are A, can be expressed as A over B, where A and B are whole numbers, and B cannot be zero. A and B are whole numbers, but B cannot equal zero, because you can't divide by zero. So examples of rational numbers would be 3 over 4, 6 over 9, 9 over 6, you can have 10 over 1, but you can't have any number over 0. You can't have that. And you can have, um, this definition kind of excludes negative numbers being in fractions, but you really can have, and it's just a negative fraction. But typically when we talk about rational numbers, we're talking about um, A and B being whole numbers. I wanted to add a little bit on to the discussion of rational numbers by saying they come into two categories. Um, there are rational numbers like uh, one half that can be expressed as a decimal of like 0 0.5 that terminates, the decimal would terminate. This bar um, can be referred to, this bar right here, as a fraction bar, or it can be referred to as a division bar. So you can actually do 2 divided into 1, 0. And you would get 0 0.5 and remainder 0. So it terminates. If you take a fraction or a rational number like 2 thirds, and when you do that division, you can quickly see what's going to happen. You get remainder 2, and you would continually be annexing zeros and getting 6s. So you just draw a bar over that, meaning 6 goes on forever and ever. So that's a repeating decimal. Irrational numbers don't do either. They, they don't repeat as a decimal and they don't terminate. They just go on and on without any kind of a pattern. And you might be scratching your head saying, well, that 
the only number I can think of that does that is pi, 3.14159, and goes on and on and on, never has any kind of a pattern. But if you punch into your calculator the square root of 5, it would tell you you're going to get 2.23606798. And then your calculator will run out of space, but this would keep going, but there's no predictable pattern. Um, and when some, if a person is behaving unpredictably, you might say they're irrational. They're just not making any sense. They're going on and on, but you can't understand what they're saying. You don't know what's coming next. And that's the way an irrational number is. You really don't know what's coming next. Square roots of um, numbers that aren't perfect squares are always an example of irrational numbers. So the square root of 3, the square root of 6, the square root of 7, but not the square root of 9 because 9 is a perfect square. So the square root of 9 is 3. It's a whole number. But you can, um, if you're careful and think about it, if you're ever asked to name an irrational number, like on a test, you can say the square root of some number, but make sure the number is not a perfect square. Then we're going to summarize everything in the next slide with a little, cool little diagram. Okay, so we started off our discussion with the set of whole numbers. That would be 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. That's supposed to be a parenthesis. This is a really small little oval here because you can leave some more space here. Then there are some numbers that, um, a bigger category of numbers that would include the whole numbers, but some numbers that are in this set of integers are not whole numbers. So we can put negative one out in here. Just some examples, negative six, but we couldn't put three fourths in here because it's a rational number. So um, a whole numbers, by the way, can be expressed as rational numbers. I could take the number two and make it two over one. So whole numbers are rational numbers. So everything in the smaller circles also fit in the larger circles. But then there's these irrational numbers that they don't really fit inside the other three circles. Sorry, I misspelled there. Like the square root of five, or pi is one. And then all of these numbers are in a larger category called the real numbers. Because they really do exist. And you may be thinking, I hope you are thinking, well, if there's these real numbers um, and they have the whole name for their category, maybe there's another set of numbers somewhere that aren't real. And they actually, there is. They're called imaginary numbers and they're outside here. It's beyond, beyond the scope of pre-algebra, but I'll just give you an example and you can think about why this number doesn't really exist. What is the square root of negative 4? So that's the thought I'll leave you with. Um, good, good job today. See you in math class.